I am going to talk about leadership. Don't you find that the people that you tune into, they speak to the things that they're walking through? Well, if you don't, they are. It's no surprise, unless of course it's a biblical study and they're in rhythm with something. But this morning from my Bible in a year, which I know some of you guys have since purchased, I wish I, I there's no royalties, no affiliate, <laughs> no, nothing like that. Just, it's an awesome Bible and I really love it. And specifically, this one's for women, but they have the exact same version made for men as well. So, highly recommend you getting one of these. Um, I just finished Jonathan Kahn's book, Harbinger 2, as well, which was wild, mind-blowing. Everything that's connected to 9-11 and prophecies from Israel that are re- being existing here, they're coming to realization again here on this city on a hill in America. If you're unaware of that stuff or whatever I'm talking about, and you want to be tuned in to what supernaturally is happening from a heaven's perspective, get that book, Harbinger 2. Okay, he has a one, but you don't need to read the one in order to understand the two. The two is most relevant as of. Since COVID, 2021, it came out. So why do I tell you these two things? One, it's the awareness factor. If we are not living woke, if we are allowing society to dictate what we see, just like the signs that I just mentioned, versus our own intuition, our own wherewithal, we are forgetting the opportunity that we are Joshua's. You, not just me. So sometimes people are like, oh, I'm going to talk about leadership and they immediately check out or, oh, I'm going to talk about entrepreneurship and they immediately check out because they feel like, oh, I don't own a business. So it's not going to relate to me or I'm not a leader. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're a dynamic leader in every part of your life, family, friend groups, your work life balance. Every I hate that word balance. Y'all know that about me, but your work and your life, you're a leader, your communities, your churches, you have to pay attention to that. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to teach you the rhythm that Joshua took as the baton was passed from Moses to the next generation of Joshua and how he actually was the one who took the vision and led the Israelites into the promised land. First off, that's a word for a lot of people, right? You might think that you've been carrying this thing for so long and you've been praying into it and you're like, why isn't this working? Why can't I do it? Can I shake you this morning and help you realize that you are only a couple feet on this eternal footpath, right? This is eternity. And the path in which you've been walking, you might never see fully realized in the visions and the dreams that God has given you. And that can be hard for people. That can actually discourage them from doing the thing that God made because they're like, why am I going to do it if I can never get there? Would you do it for your children? Would you do it for your children's children? And if you don't have kids and you're like, I can't relate, would you do it for your best friend's kids? Would you do it so that there would be freedom on the other side so that people don't have to walk through what it is that you walk through? That's hard. That's what leadership really is. It's knowing that if you're the leader of a ship, you have to have lenses that far exceed where everybody else is. That's the visionary side of our role. But you also have to be willing to face things head on when no one else is willing to do it. This is where being strong and courageous, says the Lord in Joshua 1 over and over again. We have to be strong and courageous as leaders. And we're living in an era where the leaders that we're seeing aren't actually the ones up to bat. Who is that speaking to? Who does that confuse? Think about it. Some of the people that we give titles to are not actually the ones who are in there going before said leader. Now, there are precautionary reasons for that to happen and we're gonna see it in Joshua. So it's this, this is more of a study than it is um, a dynamic uh, revelation that's happening. It's a study. It's this knowing that this is true. And I'm going to give you step by step what happened, but I need you to understand. 
He had to ready himself. He had to be able to link arms and understand the vision. So it was critical that there was conversation between the leader and the mentor, the mentor and the mentee. There was clarity. They knew where they were going. There was intention and there was conversation. So as a leader, you can't be the only one out front and just be like, come on, follow me. They need to know where they're going. You have to be able to cast vision as a leader. And that's what Moses did before he left. He passed the mantle. And then, regardless of what Moses did or didn't say to Joshua, God made it clear. And this is the part where, from a leadership perspective, I don't think we lean in to how detail-oriented God is on every single thing that we do. From the time that you wake up before your alarm to the time that you're doing the thing on your calendar that you do every single day, to the in-betweens and the outsides, God is in the mist. And when we walk blind, of course it's gonna feel like happenstance. It's, of course we're not even gonna notice said sign, said wonder, said solution, because we're gonna be so focused on the very next thing just to check a mark, just, just to check a box with a check mark, right? So first off, we have to ready ourselves, strong and courageous. We can't do anything at all anymore without courage. It takes courage to go live. It takes courage to get on a bike. It takes courage to open the Bible. It takes courage to walk out your front door. It takes courage to drive down the street. It takes courage to send your kids to school. It takes courage in everything that we do. And so this is a muscle that we're sharpening, the muscle of courageousness is connected to strength. It's not, he didn't just say be strong. No, he said be strong and courageous. They go hand in hand. So from a mentality perspective, we have to be working on that. Physicality perspective, we have to be working on that. Emotionally, whew, I got rock last week. I got hit upside the head by a bat, unexpectedly from someone I love. And it wrecked me. It wrecked me for about five hours. <laughs> Let's, let's be honest. I was like, the whole day was messed up. The rest of the afternoon, it sucked me dry of all my energy. And I realized the very next morning when I had peace from this right here, the word, the living word, took that situation, stepped on top of it, gave me peace, corrected me in the process because we all need correction. I didn't handle it perfectly either. But it sharpened me to be the leader because I was the leader in the situation. And so are you. It might feel like somebody else is in control, but that doesn't mean they're the leader. Let's talk about that. Control and leader are not the same. All right, are you ready? You wanna know how Joshua did this thing? His leadership conversation, an example, be strong and courageous. He was past the mantle. He was tapped as such. There's this awesome uh, gal, her name is Danelle Delgado. She talks about being tapped as the asset. You're being tapped as the asset. If you're listening to this right now, I'm tapping you. You are the asset. You are the leader. And until you start carrying that mantle strongly and proudly, boldly and courageously, no one's gonna follow you. And I don't mean that from a social media, follow me perspective. I mean that you're a movement maker. You're an atmosphere changer. You're a kingdom citizen. Your royalty far outseeds every title that you carry. You have a robe of many colors that's sitting in your closet and you're not putting it on. You're not putting it on because you think your brothers are going to throw you in the pit again. <laughs> if your story is like mine, you might feel like that. But you're forgetting the return of the prodigal gives that person, gives that papa and that person, a communion, a covenant that's reestablished because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, that nothing else matters. Forget that he said, she said. Forget that. All right, here's what you got to know. So I'm in Joshua uh, 2, Joshua 3 at this point. I talked about Joshua 1 and being strong and courageous being past the mantle from Moses and making sure also you're going to talk about this as well. When you're given vision, 
There might be some things you have to do in secret in order to confirm said vision. Not to confirm God, because God is always right, always truthful, always on target, right? It's not questioning God. It's questioning circumstances. Remember, we are here on earth, and therefore there's flesh associated to said circumstances. And even when the supernatural is going to come to fruition and we know that we know that we know, we still have to take precaution.